Hey. What you got there? Jelly beans? That's nice. You know they put bug fluid in those though. Oh, juice too. Crushed bugs. I mean, it could be worse. There's gummy bears which are covered in wax and bubble gum which have beef or butt in it. So. Oh, no. No. C come on now. It's alright. The diabetes will get you way before any of that stuff. Hey, kid. What's up? Oh, hi. I haven't seen you here before. Which one's your kid? Oh, childhood. The blissful bubble created by some marketing masterminds to sell more stuff. Something every egg would nearly experience, but only one out of 20 will survive from. I am now aware that the same applies for humans. But, unlike an egg, most of your childhoods die from disappointment or abandonment issues. So, in honour of all of us with terrible childhoods, a video to level out the playing field. Send this to all your perfect little friends with perfect little childhoods. And, enjoy. Before we kick this off, remember to take a moment to hit that pretty little subscribe button and ding that bell. Go on. Dang it. Speaking of perfect little childhoods, you could argue that Peter Pan is the ideal standard. A boy who lived on a private island with fairies, led a band of hooligans, fought pirates, and pinged around like a habitual raver from Shoreditch. How can anyone ruin this wholesome cartoon? Easy. Beside all the sinister theories that Peter Pan was actually the bad guy and Captain Hook was the good guy, Peter Pan was based on creator J.M. Barry's 13 year old brother who cracked his head and died while I was ice skating. Okay, so what? Well, you know, every time you hear Peter Pan is the boy who never grew up, it's because he's dead. Yes, dead. He can't grow up. It probably explains why he can fly and has a fairy. Guardian Angel. Huh. This is fun. At this point, is it shocking to have Disney ruined for you? It seems like they're taking over the world like a dark overlord in a fantasy epic. If Netflix is the kid who was really good at making Windows Movie Maker, and spent the whole lunch time minding his business in a computer room, then Disney is a slightly overweight boy who always asked if he could have a bite of your lunchbox and took something before you even answered. The company's sinister undertones, however, roots further back to its founding father. Well, Disney, who built a company by being your parents' favourite grandpa, was just like your parents' actual grandpa in that he would be an awful person by today's standards but was still a prick even in his day. Beside these questionable choices of character like uh, Jim Crow, sorry Jim Crow, Disney was pretty misogynistic and actively didn't involve women in the creative process. There was this one time when a female human was like, golly I sure like Disney wouldn't it be cool to draw for millions of children? And so, she applied to work for good old Disney. But Disney was like, Dear human female, Sorry, lassie, love, darling, doll. Girls aren't considered for my training school because the work is performed entirely by young men. P.S. Give up on your dreams. Perhaps that was for the best. Seeing as Disney notoriously didn't pay his anime as well, calling any worker who went on strike, communist. Which may explain why he set up the Motion Picture Alliance for the preservation of ideals. What's the Motion Picture Alliance for the preservation of ideals? Well, it's an anti-communist party that had heavy, heavy anti-Semitic rhetoric to it. This would line up with the theory that Disney was an anti-Semite. 
I suppose that alone is not concrete evidence that Disney was an anti-Semite. But the fact that he was a member of the Motion Picture Alliance and actively helped a movie from a German filmmaker slash notable Nazi propagandist get made puts him squarely on a level with Mussolini, who was totally not an anti-Semite, barring the fact that he was totally helping Hitler. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Regardless of the already questionable modern version of it, you know, how the prince sneaks into an unconscious woman's room and kisses her, the original tale of the story is so, so much worse. Strapping. Jean Battista Basile, the original writer, wrote the Tale of Tales in 1634, which contained 50 different stories, including early versions of the paper fairy tale like Snow White, Rapunzel, and Sleeping Beauty. Originally called Sun, Moon, and Talia, Sleeping Beauty still includes a royal sneaking into a beauty's chamber and finding her unconscious. Except he's a king, not a prince and he doesn't just kiss her. Seeing how irresistible this beauty was, he uh, forces himself on her and bounces. Still unconscious but pregnant, beauty gives birth to healthy- Wait, how is the baby still alive at this point? Huh? How did the baby get food from an unconscious woman? Babies. What? Dead twins. What the f***? Sleeping Beauty gives birth to healthy twins, but she only wakes up because the babies have been sucking on her finger for a while. Naturally. The king comes back months later after he remembers about her, because yeah, you totally forget something like that. But when Beauty sees him, she falls in love with the king who impregnated her when she was, you know, unconscious, and also becomes a mistress. I mean, the only thing that would make this dark tale a little lighter is a love triangle and a dab of baby murder. Lucky you. Guess what? The king has a queen, and when she finds out, she has Sleeping Beauty hunted down. If that kind of sounds familiar, it's Maleficent. Yeah. She wasn't a jealous witch fairy, she was just the wife of a cheating scumbag. Obviously, the queen couldn't let things be. She eventually abducts Sleeping Beauty's twins and tells her cook to kill and feed them to their father because that'll show him. In a show of human goodness, the cook doesn't do as he's told because not all humans are vengeful psychos and they're too adorable. Look at them. Adorable. Good. So this exemplar human role model cooks lamb and feeds it to the king instead. Not satisfied with what she believed was feeding babies to their father, the queen pursues Sleeping Beauty, captures her and attempts to burn her alive. As fortune would have it, the king hears the commotion and bursts in, ordering his guard to arrest the queen. The king and Sleeping Beauty and the king are reunited and they live happily ever after. Being the smart little wise ass you are, you may be already saying, every one of these old fairy tales has a moral. What's this one? According to the book, it's good things can happen when you're asleep. Yeah, let that one sink in. All childhoods can be a fragile illusion. The world is a fickle bubble that way. Growing up, it's the only world you know, and it's the only world you wish you knew growing up. To those of you sad and confused right now, you heal. To those of you rebels, bored and unfazed and thinking, no one can ruin anything anymore. Well, Elmo was played by a sexual predator. Your life is a lie. Predators are everywhere. Not even Sesame Street is safe. Hello again, it's me, Drop. Thanks for tuning in. On this channel, I am dedicated to bring you things you didn't know you wanted to know and sometimes things you generally should. That includes history, philosophy, geography and that other good, good stuff. 
if you personally want a better insight into the type of egg I am, my beliefs, my opinions, you have better luck following my Twitter. If you like this type of content, subscribe and press that bell button. If you just like watching videos made by an egg with too much time on its hands, like and comment down below. Until next time, drop out.